you receive eternal life, you will see activities of angels in your life on daily basis. Like what happened in Acts chapter 5. We are talking about I think 17 to whatever. So in that story where they were locked, the prison was still locked, they were sent out and they were asked to go and continue to preach the gospel of this life. Praise God. So now, if you don't live in this consciousness of Christ, if you don't live in this consciousness of eternal life, praise God, you will still be in bondage. You will not experience the deliverance that is already made available to you. Praise God. So because, because the wages of sin is dead, but the gift of God is eternal life. That life is a life that makes you a son of God. And now you are now living in Zion. The soldiers and the military that works with you are called angels. And they're the ones that carry these activities. Praise God. If you want to have this reputation of these things, you need to come into this consciousness. Christ consciousness is the gospel to be preached, not sin consciousness. What Jesus Christ actually dealt with was sin. Praise God. So now, Daniel, look, look at the same the same thing Paul said. When the, when the question the man asked, what shall we do that we'll be saved? Is exactly the same thing the question they asked Jesus in John chapter 6, verse 28 and 29. Daniel, can you read? New King James Version. Yes. Then they said to him, Yes. What shall we do that we may walk the works of God? Yes. 29. Jesus yes. answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Do you hear I said? <laughs> There's nothing else. The same thing that Jesus tell them then, the same thing Paul tell those people who were minding the present, it's the same thing God is still telling you now. Believe him who God has sent. His name is Jesus Christ. Believe in what he has given to you. This is the record. God has given to you eternal life. This life is in his son. Believe that the wages of sin is dead. The gift of God. Believe in the gift of God. Eternal life is a gift. See, when you receive this gift, you don't live by blood. Praise God. You don't live by blood. But you don't serve God with the consciousness of the blood life. That is where the problem is. Many are serving God from the consciousness of the blood life. And that's the trouble. Praise God. So now God doesn't want you to serve him with the consciousness of the blood life. Because the Bible said, I am crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ that what lives in me. The life that we live now is Christ's life. That is eternal life. Is the life that you have now. You see, why are you still having issues? It's because you are not living eternal life. You are not functioning from the consciousness of eternal life. So when you have Christ consciousness, you are having the consciousness of eternal life. Praise God. And that is what God wants us to know. And that is what God wants us to what? Believe. Praise God. So that's where you look at your situation from. Praise God. So the most important thing the Bible wants us to do is to what? Believe and believe and believe. Praise God. Let's look at what happens when you believe. Let's look at Luke chapter 10, verse 1, and then 17 and 21. Luke chapter 10, verse 1, 7. I'm reading from Good News Translation. Okay. After the Lord chose me the 72 men and sent them out two by two, okay. to go ahead of him to every town and place where himself was about to go. The 72 men came back in great joy. Okay. Lord, they said, even the demons obeyed us when we gave them a command your name. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered them, I saw sin of fall like lightning from heaven. Yes. Listen, listen, I've given you authority so that you can walk on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will cost you. Okay. But don't be glad because the evil spirits obey you. Mm -hmm. Rather be glad. Because your names are written in heaven. You see, he's talking to the man that is right now in eternal realm. See, so, you see, when Jesus said you are born again, what he actually meant is that your spirit has been released and your spirit is now seated together with Christ in the heavenly realm, Ephesians 2 6. Your spirit has been released. The man that is not born again, the spirit is right now in bondage. He is a flesh man. And it's too dangerous. You you will have problem. The devil will mess that person up. It doesn't matter how rich you are. That's why you see people have cancer and die. They have this and that. They go into problem. They don't come out because there is no help. The angelic help that 
we receive as children of God cannot come to them because their spirit is still in bondage. So to be saved is to free our spirit from bondage. Praise God. So now the trespasses and sin that actually brought us in bondage that our spirit is not demobilized was what Christ came to free. So to be born again is to free your spirit from bondage. Praise God. So now, now these people, when I said they send them out, they came back with what? With good news. But Jesus said, don't even be bothered of this, but rejoice that you are what? You are now living in eternal realm. You are now seated together with Christ in heaven. You are now walking from the right place that God had intention before man failed. Praise God. So the devil was able to disconnect us from that location. Jesus came to reconnect us back. That is the gospel. And once you are there, you don't suffer the things, the devil. Like I told you, you remember that who is Satan? We say that Satan was, we read some scripture, Isaiah 45 verse 7. We read uh, Isaiah 54 verse 16. We are God said, I am the one that created. We read the story with scripture in First Samuel. We are God said, this evil spirit from the Lord with torment saw. Praise God. Yes. People could not believe it. We also read the scripture in, in Ezra chapter 12, where the God will release the destroyer to destroy all the firstborn of Egypt today. And he said, the house where this blood is cannot be touched. That story has not changed. To today, the where the blood of God is, the enemy cannot come in there. So to be blood conscious, to be Jesus Christ conscious, is to be blood, because it is the blood that actually saved us. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Now, Bible says, go and preach the forgiveness of sins. Go to the world, tell them their sins are forgiven. Why are they still in danger? So our work is to evangelize, tell them that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Go and tell them that Jesus said, I beseech you, come now. Your sins are forgiven. Come. Why are you still there? Why are you still in trouble? But Bible said, you must believe. Yes. If you don't believe, there will be trouble. Praise God. Hallelujah. Say you must what? Believe. believe. The question is that, do you, do you believe? Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Do you believe? That's the question. Yeah. Let us read Matthew 26, 27 to 28. Matthew 26. I'm reading from Good News Translation. Yes. Then he took a cup, gave thanks to God, and gave it to them. Okay. Drink it all of you, he said. Yeah. This is my blood, which shields God's covenants. My blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Uh huh. 29. I tell you, I will never again. No, no, stop there. For the what? Forgiveness of sins. Please, your sins has been forgiven. You come in now, but you have to maintain that consciousness. Because once you do, once you see, why is God so concerned about you coming in? Because of Philippians chapter 2. Daniel, read Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. Please, if we are not encouraging you to sin because your sins are forgiven. No. When you come into Christ, yes. there is an in-working program from God better than man it's not by what people say it don't sin don't sin no it is god himself all you do do everything to maintain them in this consciousness god will work out their their bondage they will reduce sin to the point that they will stop sinning praise god hallelujah daniel read that verse now i told you okay i'll show you from verse 12 to get the context yes okay therefore my beloved as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, yeah. but now much more in my absence. Yes. Walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. Yes, uh-huh. Yes. For it is God who works in you. When you come in now, 